Welcome to the Clare Champions Special General Election Preview. We are joined today in the Old Ground Hotel with a number of shrewd political advisors who will assess the main winners and losers in the general election on February the 8th. In the first part of the programme, I will discuss the prospects of election candidates with former Minister of State Tony Killeen. Uh, also, we have Patricia McCarthy, former First Citizen and Clare County Councillor, and Geraldine Gregan. Former chairman and secretary of, or sorry, former chairman of Clare Fine Gael. At the time of recording, 11 candidates have declared their intention to run in the general election. Fine Fall have three candidates, outgoing deputy Timmy Dooley, uh, the first citizen of the county, Clare, uh, or Councillor Cahill Crow, and Rita McInerney. Fine Gael have three candidates, uh, Minister of State Pat Breen. Senator Martin Conway and Joe Carey. There are uh, tr uh, three independents at, at uh, the time of recording. You have Michael McNamara, former Labour deputy. You have uh, Trudy Layden, who has declared her intention today to run in the election. And you also have Quilty Farmer, Joe Wolfe. Theresa O'Donoghue will be representing People Before Profit. Roisin Garvey will be under the Green Party banner. Uh, at the time of recording, it looks like Sinn Féin uh, haven't made a decision yet as to whether they will have a candidate. Uh, Noel Moran has withdrawn from the race and Sinn Féin are due to have their selection convention at the weekend. Uh, I suppose they're looking at the, uh, the I suppose the main, I suppose the, t the main development, I suppose, has been the withdrawal of uh, B Deputy Michael Hartley, Tony. In terms of the last election, election, he was, I suppose, a political sensation in that he swept the boards uh, with a very impressive 8,600 votes. Where do you think his votes will go? He had an excellent network that I don't think anybody else in the field can replicate at this point. Uh, so um, my gut feeling is that they will scatter fairly widely. Uh, he would be sort of spoken about as a West Clare TD, but in actual fact, uh, his votes were pretty widespread throughout the county, particularly north, and there was a fair nest of them in East Clare, and they were pretty widely distributed. So it won't be just a, a geographic beneficiary. beneficiary. Uh, I think the two main parties would have felt that they lost a lot of voters who you know, had been heretofore fairly solidly theirs to him. So I, I think both big parties will be expecting to, to get some back. Rita McInerney is geographically well-placed, uh, but, and Pat Breen would probably feel as well that he would have some to gain. But I think they'll scatter very widely, and, and I think the impact will be quite different from Dr. Hartley's vote. I, th I think the impact is likely to be, uh, my lazy way for summing things up really, is that there are three seats between the six Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael candidates, and almost certainly a seat for the others. I suppose 2-2 two two isn't impossible, but I, I think that's the way it'll be. Patricia, would you share that analysis? Um, I'm not really sure. Um, it depends. The tide is very important in elections. Um, at the moment, it would appear that the government party, Fine Gael, are the ones that are in the biggest trouble. Um, and that they're, the electorate seem to be aiming at them. They haven't as yet, as I can, from what I can gather, really looked at Fianna Fáil and whether they're going to punish them for supporting Fine Gael or whether they have forgotten them for what they did um, leading to the crash. So, and Fianna Fáil have three good, strong candidates in scattered er, strategically across the county. Um, I think Dr Hartley's vote will go in all directions. Um, there will be people, but the danger about... The, the vote that Dr Harty got, if he took it from the parties, as Tony has said, is that it may not go back to the party because once you start breaking that allegiance, then the allegiance starts is gone and people haven't a hesitation doing it a second time or a third time. So I think therein lies the, the problem. If 
Um, and, and I am sorry to see that Nolene Morden has has decided um, not to put her name forward for the convention. So it, it will depend on who the candidate for Sinn Féin is because she had a sizable vote. Now, whether it was a Nolene Morden vote hard that she had worked hard for over the previous five years or whether it's a genuine Sinn Féin vote, it's not really clear. So it depends on who their candidate is, if they're having a candidate, uh, whether they can attract that vote or not uh, remains to be seen. So if they have a sizable vote and they're with the all all the other A and others, mm. and in that now I would be putting um, Michael McNamara and Roisin Garvey, uh, it will depend on what type of a vote they attract. If the parties split fairly evenly, they will, they will equally be depending on transfers to get elected. So transfers in this instance, I think, are going to be very important. I don't think there's anybody likely to run away with it. I might be wrong in that, but that's my assessment. Now, maybe, I know, Tony, you think that because to, uh, Timmy Dooley is there and the sitting that he's probably going to head, but that doesn't mean that he'll, that he'll have a massive... He got a great vote the last time as well, but that doesn't mean that that would follow. And you have Cahill Crow snapping at his heels in his own area, and now you have Michael McNamara again in, the, in that area. So it may or may not... Um, so they may all break fairly evenly. Mm -hmm. So now you're into the situation as to how all the others are doing and what their vote is like and how that, that's going to spread. And as I say, in this now, the only uncertainty really is in relation to Sinn Féin, who the candidate mm -hmm. and where the candidate is located. Would it be fair to say at this stage that, that if, if Sinn Féin do pick a candidate that they're starting with a disadvantage coming in, coming in so late? That's why it's important to see who the candidate is. Does the candidate have name recognition? And is the brand strong enough? And in the last couple of days, we've seen a little bit of... There was that episode in Dublin where one of their councillors insulted the Taoiseach um, in a way that I wouldn't approve of. And I think if somebody does that, you, you ask them to apologise. I know the Taoiseach accepted the apology, but I thought it was the most backhanded apology anybody ever gave. And there's no, no way of dressing that up. And then if the party leader endorses that type of, a, of an apology, in my opinion, it diminishes the value of it. You know, so, and again, it depends on who the candidate is. If the candidate is seen as a local community worker then and known in the area, then they will attract a vote that wouldn't necessarily be Sinn Féin, but then they also have to attract the Sinn Féin vote. Just turning to Fine Gael there, Geraldine, you have, we say, three strong candidates. Um, you also have maybe a follow from the local elections there where, rightly or wrongly, um, Martin Conway came under criticism for the, the loss there of... Uh, Bill Slattery's seat. So h what's your analysis of, of Fine Gael's prospect of retaining their two seats? Um, I'm confident that we will retain okay. our two seats. That um, uh, going on, uh, quite rightly, uh, Patricia said there, um, you know, we're in the defence mode because we're in power for the last nine years. But if you look at the state of our country, uh, when Fine Gael came into power, you know, we can defend it. Uh, we can defend our actions as regards uh, Brexit up to date, up to now. Um, that, uh, you know, in an overall sense, w I feel we're strong, you know. So um, the um, and the three candidates, very good candidates, like very well name recognition, I know, from going around with them. Um, and um, you mentioned Michael Harty's votes, like they'll come back to a certain, they'll scatter. I agree with um, Tony and Patricia uh, in that uh, some of them will certainly come back to Finnegan. Will Fine Pat be the most the likely beneficiary in, in Finnegan? Uh, for, for Michael Harty's votes, he probably yeah. would, yes. Mm. But, but Michael Harty's votes were based on, 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 on um, a movement as much as anything else, like Save Your Village. Mm. Um, now, I've said before this in another medium that um, uh, my travelling around West Clare, uh, the Wild Atlantic Way has done the work for tourism. Uh, there are fantastic facilities around villages now. So uh, I think that movement has died somewhat. You know, there is a vibrance around, okay. I, you know. I'm surprised you're saying that now in a week when Cross School closed. Yeah, well, no, I, so I, I'll that, defend that in the sense... No, I'm not asking no, to defend it, but yeah. I'm just saying that that's that's not saying that we have a vibrant um, rural... Um, there's re regeneration going on. I'm not saying that there isn't tourism, and I'm not saying there haven't been improvements, but the actual population in the county is declining in areas where an awful effort was made to increase it. If we think back to Jim Connolly and the movement to uh, regeneration... I'm sorry now for cutting across you, but well, it's, it's just... Since, yeah. since time... 
immemorial, going back to my own childhood, there was a primary school closed in my own parish. Uh, a parish with three schools and one closed, and everyone was up in arms that the place was going to die. And, you know, it went on. You get shifts of population. There is a trend for younger people to go where the work is into our cities and towns. But still, we have massive roads here. We have, we're a Midwest region, you know, that is ripe for more development. You know, and there has been community m money put in by this government into our communities. You need early, I live in Clare Castle. The place is shining in the last few years. You know, there are... Uh, if, if you look at what's the adage on over politics... In, in Newmarket has been money poured into it. Uh, sorry? Yeah, it's just it, the adage all politics is local. And if you look at, mm. obviously, homelessness and the trolley crisis... Fine Gael couldn't be happy when you have 92 people on trolleys in UHL. Like that's surely an indictment on the government. Yeah, that's that's a difficult one to defend. I agree with you. But it's a work in progress. And we hear about, we hear the bad cases. Uh, there's quite good cancer care. There's good heart work being done. Uh, diabetes people. I, my own husband is diabetic, type 2, and there's wonderful care for him. Support system in place. Um, I brother-in-law with a stint problem and in a matter of days it was dealt with uh, a brother <laughs> and we're not all sick but uh, hernia operation in a day and person well, no. dispatched yeah. you know we I'm don't sorry. hear those in the media you know I can't take much more of it okay <laughs> and you go I, no no fair I enough mean, no I mean we have 500 jobs gone in Molex before this year is out, it'll be 500 jobs gone in Molex. It's not just, they're not just impacting Molex. Molex was using a lot of people, there was a lot of work in the immediate area that was contracted out from Molex. There was a big wage bill coming into the area, and that's going to be gone. Now, you might replace the immediate jobs, and they might be filtered into other areas, but that wage bill coming in and that expenditure in, on uh, goods and services is gone out of the area. I would have to say, and I have kept myself very quiet in mm. relation to politics and kept out of it for the last five years and so far as it was possible, but I would have to say, of all the places in the, in the county that's neglected, the town of Shannon is totally neglected, and you're talking about roads, and you're talking about services, and they're not there. Our road is disintegrating, and all you look out around the place and you see flooding. And then to see candidates in before, as soon as the strike of a bell was launched, they were in putting up their election posters, putting them up on junctions and putting them up on, on, on traffic lights and putting them up on road signs. Now, I'll go, I'll go every place, and I haven't even started in the hospitals, and I haven't started on, 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 the, on the housing. The hospitals are fine for everyone that gets into the hospital eventually, but if you have to spend even one hour too much... On, on, on a trolley in, in ED, as they're calling it now, accident and emergency. It's an hour too much. But we have people in there for three, four days. Then they get transferred. They get the good news that they're going to a ward. And they finish up in a ward, yeah. They finish up in a, corridor, a bed in a corridor of a ward. And they could be there for two more nights. Now, I'm talking about... From, yeah. Sorry, Tony. Yeah. Yeah. One of the difficulties for Fine Gael is the same as the difficulty of every government, in a way that uh, media naturally covers, you know, the bad story. A lot of bad stories and some mm. good stories. Mm. And I think Fine Gael made a fundamental mistake the last time, uh, or after the last election, and the media sort of agree with it, that the slogan was the difficulty. It was the kind of word after the last election, Fine Gael's problem was the slogan. But it wasn't the slogan. The real problem was that in 2011, people believed that Labour and Fine Gael were going to change things. And they couldn't or they didn't, but they didn't anyway. They took the same programme that the... Fianna Fáil Green government had put in place and worked that through. And I think you, one person who deserved a lot of credit for that was Michael Noonan because it was actually very difficult to continue with that programme when you were after saying that you do the opposite. And I think that's where the difficulty arose on that occasion. If I can come in there, uh, unemployment is down to single figures in the time that uh, yeah, Fine Gael have been in government. Of course right? it is. We, I came out from Limerick yesterday, a queue of cars coming from work at five o'clock in the evening. You know, yeah. uh, go back seven years ago and the road is practically empty. And getting back to roads, I lived and worked in Caffin for 10 years. If you want to see bad roads, you know, you'll see bad roads. Not up anymore. We'll, 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 Not we'll for a number of years. Come back to that topic again. But we're just going we're to take, well serviced here. We're just going to take a short, a short yeah. break. Yeah. yeah.